If you're going to go groping <laughs> some woman's posterior, it's probably a good idea if the woman happens to be your spouse. Yes, exactly right. So that brings the sixth commandment Although, into it. Although, depending on the kind of mood your spouse may be in, you still might get slapped. But uh. This is true. <laughs> Bringing you law, gospel, and guns. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Hi folks, welcome to Armed Lutheran Radio, a show about guns, hunting, competitive shooting, the natural right of self-defense, and what God's Word says about the issues surrounding gun rights and gun ownership. I am your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran. And this, believe it or not, is episode 279, quickly uh, closing in on 300, which will be toward the end of the year, as it always is. Joining me once again, the pistol-packing padre himself, Pastor John Bennett. Pastor, welcome back. Thank you, Lloyd. Good to be back. It is good to get back together with all the craziness. Uh, This is uh, with all the craziness going on. Around yes. the world and uh, the embarrassments that we're uh, uh, having to endure as <laughs> as Americans at the moment. Embarrassments is putting it mildly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really is. Uh, I I thought we would avoid that subject today, just because I know that there's go- probably going to be a, a pontification on this, and there's and for those perhaps, of you who are yeah. me- <laughs> members of the Reformation Gun Club, you're going to see about a thirty minute rant tomorrow. Uh, so today what we're th- I thought we would do is, is something that we call Crime in the Ten Commandments. Uh, we're looking at some, some recent crime stories, uh, talking about how the Ten Commandments apply and what, we, what the criminals or the victims might have done differently in light of the Ten Commandments and um, the Second Amendment where applicable. Uh, but before we begin, I do want to, to give a shout out and a thank you to all the awesome men and women who make this show possible, the members of the Reformation Gun Club. Uh, this week, I want to uh, specially uh, shout out to Brad from Hartford, Wisconsin, Dallas from Severance, Colorado, Dan from Indian Trail, North Carolina, uh, another Dan, Daniel from Chehalis, Washington, I think I pronounced that right this time, Kenneth from Sugarland, Texas, uh, Mark from up your way, St. Paul, Minnesota, and the disreputable Bartlett. Thank you all so much for your support. Uh, we really do appreciate it, folks. Armed Lutheran Radio is listener funded. That means that we rely on the support of our listeners. We don't have any advertisers. You don't. We don't have any sponsors. You're not going to have to sit through any co- commercials for HelloFresh or any of that stuff today. Um, for as little as a dollar a month, you can you can help support the show, get access to hundreds of hours of exclusive content, invitations to our monthly online hangouts, the next of which is coming the 29th, uh, and access to our cool new website, plus the satisfaction of knowing that you helped make all of this possible. If you'd like to learn more, check out all the benefits and all the content that's available at armedlutheran.us slash gunclub. Uh, or look for a link in the show notes for this or any of our previous episodes. All right, as I said, we're playing Crime in the Ten Commandments. Honestly, this is um, this is something that we started doing, I think, last year. It's kind of a fun, fun thing that we do where we look at crime stories, self-defense stories. We try to uh, look at them in light of the Ten Commandments and, and also learn some self-defense lessons along the way. Uh, we've done this, we branched out and did Florida Man episodes based on this sort of concept. But the truth is that Florida Man can't hold a candle to New York Man when it comes to crime uh, and the policies in that state um, when New York Man repeats his crimes over and over and over again, <laughs> thanks to their crazy no cash bail policies. Uh, yeah. What could go wrong there? No. Well, you're about to find out. <laughs> if you if you didn't know, you'll find out here shortly. Florida man, his exploits are, are generally bizarre and often hilarious. New York man, though, tends to be more brutal and infuriating. Um, so all of these, and keep in mind, all of these stories are from just the past week in New York City. So 
this is not like, you know, when we dig for some Florida man stuff, sometimes we get a little off the beaten track and it might be months or even years we find something in the past. No, these are all in the last the last seven days. So Florida man is the gift that keeps on giving. New York man is the gift that comes more often. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. And I don't know whether you would call this a gift or not. <laughs> this is a gift you want to return as soon as, as, soon as <laughs> it's like that, that ugly sweater that, you know, as soon as the uh, in-laws leave and, and go back home, you, you check the tag and see where you can take it to return it the very next day. So this first story, um, I think this one, uh, th- this is one of the milder of the bunch. Um, shocking surveillance footage from New York City caught the moment when a woman attempted to fight back after a man came up behind her and groped her buttocks while she was walking down a Brooklyn street. NYPD Crime Stoppers released video on Monday depicting the unidentified male suspect sought in connection with a forcible touching that happened on the corner of South 4th Street and Havemeyer Street in New York, uh, in New York's 90th precinct and the New York police department's 90th precinct precinct. For those of you who are not from New York city, you have no idea where that is. I don't either. Uh, but let's just keep on going here. Um, footage captured at two 15 AM. Okay. There's your first warning. Mm. Yeah. Sunday morning showed a man approaching a 26 year old female victim from behind and forcibly grab her buttocks. The woman who was, Looking down on her cell phone as she walked, appears startled as the man grabs her from behind, but then quickly pushes him back. The video shows that she then lunges towards him and takes a swing at him, but the man quickly delivers blows of his own. The woman briefly falls to the ground before hitting, getting back up as the man punches her several more times. She gets knocked back and falls into a wall, but remains on her feet. And the man, fortunately, I'm adding the fortunately part, finally walks off. Now, what do we got here? Let's just, let's, aside from the perpetrator wow. taking cues from Governor Cuomo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe Biden. And Joe Biden. He didn't sniff her. Um, didn't, didn't sniff her, but uh, just ask, <laughs> just ask, uh, what, what was her name? Um. Oh, yes. I can't think of her name now. She shares the same name as some Hollywood actress, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Tara Reed. That's the name. Gotcha. Just, yep. Just ask Tara Reed how uh, how handsy Uncle Joe is. Yeah. So, let, let, the, I think the, the self-defense lessons are, are bigger. Uh, there's more of them than, I think, the, the 10th Commandment issues. But let's run through the 10th Commandment. Here are the Ten Commandments and, and, uh, and see what we've got. Uh, so the Ninth and Tenth Commandments are about coveting. Uh, anything? I guess he covered, coveted covet her rear stra- end. Yeah, I was going to say, don't cover a stranger's backside. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, if, no. it, if you're going to go groping <laughs> some woman's posterior, it's probably a good idea if the woman happens to be your spouse. Yes, Exactly right. So that brings the sixth commandment Although, into it. Although, depending on the kind of mood your spouse may be in, you still might get slapped. But uh. this is true. <laughs> this is very true. Be very cognizant of of when it is best to approach that sort of uh, or makes that sort of a move. Um, seventh commandment. I guess um, you can, you know, stealing a feel that didn't belong to him. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> After all, it wasn't his buttocks, so. <laughs> now that would be Florida man. <laughs> man now, Florida man just video. gets off by grabbing his own behind, but uh, that's right. Florida man caught on video fondling himself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So obviously, this is there's a fifth commandment thing here. Clearly, a, a uh, sixth commandment thing as well. Right, right. Because yep. it is an act of, of sexual aggression, so I, I think we should throw that in there. Definitely. Um, uh, it's a violation of the 11th commandment, which is just don't be an a-hole. Um, <laughs> I thought that was don't go stupid places with stupid people and do stupid things. Maybe that's the 12th. Maybe that's the 12th, yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> 
Yeah, but but like you said, lots of self defense lessons to be learned here. Definitely. <clears throat> um, so I don't think uh, is there a fourth commandment issue here? And for those, I guess for for those listening who are not of the orthodox and more traditional persuasion when it comes to the numbering of the commandments, let's let's kind of. Oh, sure. Feel, Good idea. I just realized we probably ought to fill that in. So when we were talking about the 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 seventh, uh, thou shalt not steal, as it is numbered uh, in the in the Lutheran Church, and I think the Roman Catholic, and maybe yes. East, Eastern Orthodox. I I believe so, but but I won't no. say definitively because I'm not an expert on Eastern Orthodox theology. Yeah, don't quote us on that one. Yes. Uh, sixth commandment, of course, would be then. Um, Adultery, thou shalt not commit adultery, but that's, there's, he's not, well. If you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery with her, according to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There you go. That's what I wanted to fill in there, because we're not talking, it's obviously not his, his wife. Um, We don't know if he's married. So uh, if he's married, it's even worse. Well, he's probably not married now after this. I mean. (laughs) At least if he's been arrested and so forth. Well, he might be married to a guy named Bubba. <laughs> True. Perhaps he was uh, in- inebriated and mistook the young woman for a young man. Who knows? Well, when he gets behind <laughs> bars, Bubba may be coming calling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, fifth commandment, of course, is thou shalt not commit murder. But murder, is, but the fifth um, is more than just the act of murder itself. Right. Committing physical harm or failing to protect, and thus by your in, your refusal to act, someone else is then harmed as a result. So we could include that in there. And we could also take cues from uh, the Apostle John where he makes it very clear. I believe it's in his first epistle where he says that whoever hates his brother is a murderer. So. Gotcha. Act of uh, hatred, we would say. Right. Fourth commandment. Um, honor your father and mother. And of course we expand that to also talk about honoring all those in authority over us. Correct. So we could say that there vaguely is a fourth commandment issue because it is illegal to grope other people. Right. Yes. Other people who aren't your spouse. To whom you are not married. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Or, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess you could say, I'm sure we have listeners who may not be married, but perhaps have a, are romantically involved with another person, so. Right. To to grope someone against their will. Yes, there you go. There. Good. Or how did they describe it in the story? It was a forcible touching. I wonder if that's actually how it's described in the law. Um, Perhaps, yeah, possibly. Third commandment is is honoring the Sabbath day. So obviously, well, this happened on Sunday. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. So um, I'm 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 betting um, this guy. Cup and feels in the Lord's day. Yeah, didn't go to shame, church shame. probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. Second, and now he needs to definitely go to confession. <laughs> I mean. Absolutely. Just, just, just for those who are not uh, uh, Lutherans, uh, it's not just Catholics who believe in confession. Lutherans do as well. So yes, yes. And um, uh, the second commandment, um, we don't have any audio, so we don't know if there were any uh, foul language here that uh, in taking of the Lord's name in vain. And then, of course, everything always comes back to the first. So yes. how would how would how would you say that this action and the, and the violations of the various commandments that we've outlined, how does it come back to the first in this case? Well, and, and, and really they all come down to the first, the, fir- the mm. first commandment, you shall have no other gods above me. Um, the, uh, and, and this is an interesting note within Judaism. Uh, the first commandment is, uh, Hero Israel, the Lord, your God, the Lord is one. So it is a declaration of, I guess you could say, the sovereignty of God. And so uh, in doing or in committing any sin, you have placed your sinful desire in a position uh, over your love for God. And so you could say, and, and this is the way that Luther uh, also comments on the first commandment that when you sin, you have 
committed a sin against the first commandment, regardless of what are the commandments you've committed. So every sin is a sin against the first commandment. You've made Good. yourself, yep. you know, above God in that case. So, so I mean, it's, yeah, th- th- this guy's a scumbag. Um, but, you know, yeah. Yeah. New York man. Way to go, <laughs> dude. Don't drop the soap. Yep. So what, se- what self-defense lessons, as we mentioned a, a few moments ago, there's quite a few here. So where do we get started with self-defense? What's, what's the first lesson from, from our description here from the news? Well, going out at 2 o'clock in the morning alone, I don't care what city you're in. That's Nothing just... Nothing good happens at no, 2 o'clock. In the- <laughs> no. I mean, just just as Jesse Smollett, you know, it's you go out alone <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning and, and you're able to uh, to commit fraud on the entire society and claim it's a racist attack. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, nothing good happens at 2 o'clock in the morning when you are alone on a dark street. And well, especially, especially for a woman. Especially um, for a woman. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... That should be the most obvious. Yeah. Um, the other is the second. The second kind of harkens back to a pontification you did a couple of weeks ago, talking about um, paying attention to your surroundings. Yeah, situational awareness. I was calling it that. You know, mm-hmm. uh, of being aware of your surroundings. That um, if you've got your nose stuck in your device, you're paying attention to your device, not what's happening around you. Um, and although, at 2.15 a.m. <laughs> and at 2.15 a.m. I mean, if she hadn't been paying attention to her device, she might have been able to snap a picture of the guy before he, before or after he grabbed her buttocks, so at least she could show this, his you know, ugly mug to the police. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Might have heard him coming. Uh, might have been able to, to avoid the, the contact with him altogether. Um, right, right. So burying your face in your phone... Bad idea when you're out in public, even worse when you're a, a woman walking alone out in public, even worse when you're a woman walking alone out in public at 2.15 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and ultimately worse when you're a woman walking alone 2.15 in the morning and it's New York City. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, I, 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 I guess it's at least not as bad as the south side of Chicago. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, who knows? But yeah, probably just, roughly equivalent. <laughs> but but I think one of the other um, the other lessons to be learned here is that if you are not equipped to defend yourself against an attacker, who especially if you're a woman mm-hmm. who is larger and stronger than you are, perhaps I mean it, it would have. I hate to say this. It would have gone a lot better for her if she hadn't retaliated and just tried Run to away. get away from the guy. Yeah, yeah, because she's lucky that he didn't continue to assault her. Right. I mean, this this could have ended up with rape and or murder. Yeah. Serious injury. I mean, people, people, whenever we see one of these stories about people pulling a gun or actually shooting someone who was punching them, what what the people who complain about those stories fail to recognize is if you're sucker punched, if you're hit, especially by someone who is much larger than you are um, in the right spot, it can cause you to black out. It can cause brain damage. It can potentially kill you. Right. It may not kill you instantly. A lot of those cases where people die from that kind of head trauma, it's usually later because of whatever damage was done in the assault. Right. And I mean, not to mention the fact that even if you are equipped to protect yourself with, you know, whether and and it's New York. So her chances of being able to have a a permit to to carry a firearm concealed in New York, (laughs) slim to none. Um, I mean, I mean, now that she has been accosted, perhaps her chances are a little bit better of getting a permit. (laughs) Right. Uh, But, you know, pepper spray. Taser, yep. stun gun, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, for a second, let's just give her the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps she was walking to the bus stop after getting off her shift at a bar or something like that. Right. And so she was 
out at that hour of the early morning for a good reason. Um, again, if you're going to be in a situation like that where you are alone at night at, at such an hour, uh, perhaps it'd be a good idea to get, you know, pepper spray or so forth. Um, yeah. Yes. So, especially since she is in an ant, if, if you live in a city where, where it's not an anti gun city, this is a, this is a great example of, you know, the gun being the great equalizer for women. Right. Because right. despite all of the, the anti science crap that we hear from the left about men and women being the same, they're just not. No, no. And in this video, you can see the guy is much bigger than this woman. And so there's a, a, a noticeable disparity of force in this encounter that could easily have ended with her being severely injured or killed. So if you live in a, in a city that's not anti-2A, it would behoove you to, to get a gun, get a carry permit, learn to use it, learn to, to shoot it and draw it, and carry it with you at all times, especially if you're walking around at night um, by yourself. Right. But if right. you're in a if you're in an anti two A place like New York, there are still options. Exactly, and you know, and, and perhaps this very well could have happened in a good neighborhood. You know that that's certainly within the realm of possibility. Sure, that there are upper class neighborhoods within. New York City, but you know, I went to college in Irvine, California, which I don't know if it's still the case now, but at that time it was rated the safest city in America with a population of a hundred thousand or more. Mm -hmm. And yet there were still cases of of rape, especially on you know, it didn't to my knowledge, there weren't cases that happened on the you know, the university that I attended. But the big state university that was there, there were cases of rape that would happen from time to time. So even, you know, in, a, in, good, in good neighborhoods and in, in safe cities, these kinds mm -hmm. of things still do happen. Yeah, that's and maybe that's the biggest story or the biggest point to come out of this is don't, don't become so complacent that you think, Oh, well, I live in a safe neighborhood. Oh, I live yeah. in a safe city. Because what what's one of the, the most common things you hear these victims say afterwards? I never thought it would happen to me. Exactly. I never thought it yeah. would happen in this neighborhood. Um, so being aware of your surroundings, particularly if you have to be out late at night or if you have to be uh, walking by yourself um, and having some means to protect yourself, to defend yourself in case something like this happens, even if it's something as simple as pepper spray or, um, or mace or something like this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, the next one is another, um, another surveillance video. Now they, they have, they have not captured this gentleman who, gentleman, the guy who was groping the girl at 250. Scumbag. Scumbag. Yeah. Uh, this next guy, we go from a video of a scumbag groping someone, still hasn't been caught, to something far, far worse. This is from Lower Manhattan. Horrifying new surveillance video, and this guy has still not been caught either. Uh, video showing the moment a 51-year-old man is brutally attacked by a hatchet-wielding maniac. Oh at a lower Manhattan ATM. The footage obtained by the New York Post on Tuesday shows the victim at one of the ATMs inside a, inside a Chase Bank. Oh, right? wow. He, this is not out on the street. This is in the vestibule of the bank at Broadway near Beaver Street in the financial district shortly before 5.30 p.m. on Sunday. So we got, we got another Sunday attack. Uh, when the, the attacker walks in, removes a hatchet from a bag, sneaks up behind the guy, and begins to slash him. Oh. The frightened and bloodied victim tries to fend off the assault, falling to the floor several times as he futilely attempts to grab his crazed assailant's weapon. When the unidentified attacker is finished, he smashes the screens of all the cash dispensing machines before throwing the hatchet down and walking away. 
The wounded man was taken to Bellevue Hospital in a stable condition where he remained Tuesday in the intensive care unit. In a brief bedside interview with the Post, the dazed victim with his head wrapped in a large bandage, and it's absolutely fortunate that he survived this, um, kidding. recalled part of the attack. A man was there with a hatchet and hit my head and my leg, said the victim, in Spanish. Before 10 p.m. Tuesday night, police apprehend... Oh, they did apprehend a suspect oh, who good. Fit, fit the description of the hatchet attacker. Um, the 37-year-old man was smashing car windows when officers in uh, a 10-precinct patrol car spotted him. He was taken to Bellevue for a hospital for evaluation. Um, and as of Tuesday, had not been charged. This video is absolutely terrifying. Wait, um, what? He hasn't been charged even though they have him on video committing this crime yeah this heinous assault yeah on the now, bellevue is that like uh, a, a psychiatric hospital or something because it sounds it, like it this is. guy could be okay i was gonna yeah. say guy randomly smashing car windows after assaulting in such a horrible way some random stranger because it sounds like there was no motive no theft involved or anything Exactly. And and so when we look at the Ten Commandments on this one, it's there's not a whole lot here. It's he doesn't steal anything. He he's just smashing stuff. So there's no ninth or tenth commandment issue. There's no eighth commandment issue. There's no seventh. Or well, there is a seventh. Well, destruction of property. Could destruction be a, of property. Yeah. yeah. Um, um there's no sixth, obviously. But there is definitely a fifth commandment issue because he commits this horrible assault and he could very easily have killed this man. Yeah, no kidding. Um, fourth commandment, as we mentioned earlier, uh, you know, by breaking the law, you're, uh, you're disrespecting, uh, dishonoring the authorities over us. Um, not, well, I started to say, I made a note, not really a third commandment issue, except that it, this did happen on Sunday again. <laughs> Um, and obviously this nut job needs Jesus. Um, Maybe and of you course, heard a really bad sermon and was still upset about it. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> um, maybe the, maybe the, uh, the potluck at, at, at church didn't agree with him. <laughs> um, bad case of indigestion. We, we know he shouldn't be saying these things because it might give his lawyer ideas for, for exactly. uh, ledgering, uh, for, for levering leveraging sorry i can't get the words out for leveraging a defense so yeah lawyers are bad enough let's not give them any ideas um so and again it all comes back to the first you know any any violation of the commandments is a, is a violation of god's law and a so the self defense issues are interesting because if you watch this video there are some things that stand out to you First of all, the attacker is black and the victim appears off white. Now, I'm not getting, I, I'm going to bet that they're going to find out that, well, now that, it, now that I read this, this additional article and he's nuts, so maybe it, it's not. My first thought was maybe this was a racially motivated crime because the, the sure. victim looks foreign. I was thinking maybe Asian or maybe Jewish, he, and, but he does not speak English, so he is he is an immigrant of some sort. Um, but the guy walks in, uh, as you'll see it on the video, the the attacker, uh, good marks for him, he is wear, wearing a mask at least, so he's safe from COVID. Um, the He comes in from the right in this vestibule. There's like four, um, it looks like, little computers, you know, it's, it's not what you would picture as an ATM with the big machine. It's just a screen, a touch screen on a desk. And the guy's standing there and he's so focused on the screen. He doesn't see the guy enter from his right at all. He doesn't even look up. He doesn't even acknowledge him. And the guy walks past him with a hatchet, mm. gets behind him and then smashes him in the back of the legs with the hatchet. And that's wow. the first time he realizes he's in trouble. So the situational awareness thing is paramount in this one. They're alone in a room. 
And the guy is, he's not looking at his phone, but he's so intent on the screen that he pays no attention to the guy who walks right past him and positions himself right behind him and then hits him. I, I'm watching the video now. This is horrific. It's horrific. It really is. Uh, although the mask, maybe he's just being, you know, COVID conscious, you know, but. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This poor guy. It is absolutely her. And there are a couple of times when he gets down oh. on the he's down on the floor. He's covered in blood. And he was in a position where if crazy guy had taken one more swing, he could have killed him. He's he's down Easily. on his knees. Yeah, he's down on his knees a couple of different times. And the guy's arm with the with the hatchet is free. For some reason, thank the Lord, he doesn't actually carry out, you know, hit the guy in the head with it. That would have been the end of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there, there, there are no happy endings with this one, but at least it didn't end with a body bag. Yeah, it very easily could have. And, and it, did you notice, too, his, re, his lack of reaction when the guy walks through? Yeah, it's like he, he doesn't even notice that he's there. He, he, you would think he could have picked it up out of his peripheral vision. He certainly could have heard the guy walking in, especially if he's taking a hatchet out of a bag. Yeah. And I know it's, it's common, it's normal for us to, when we're queued up at something like at, at a fast food restaurant or an ATM, for us to just to understand and expect that there's going to be somebody waiting behind us. But it's probably good practice to... Every now and then, peek over your shoulder or turn so you can get your peripheral vision to pick up what's behind you so that this sort of thing doesn't happen because this guy took advantage of, of the guy's complete obliviousness to stand there and, and think for a second about, all right, where am I going to hit him? And what he does is he goes for his legs first. Yeah. Here's, I, you know, this is a little bit um, disconcerting, but... Just looking up the information on this, the uh, the attacker is a a veteran of the armed forces. Oh, um, so his name is uh, Aaron Garcia, which is interesting because that's usually, you know, not not the name of you know he he looks like as if he were African American, but a thirty seven year old. Don't know much else, but that's, yeah. So, I mean, this is one of those very sad cases where it could be suffering from traumatic brain injury from, you know, and I'm just trying to put the best construction on everything. Right. Eighth commandment, uh, or not, not eighth, yeah, eighth commandment, sorry. Eighth commandment, uh, putting the best construction on everything that perhaps PTSD, you know, um, you know, well, given what we've gone through injury, this perhaps. week with with Afghanistan completely falling apart, right? That, that brings to mind the fact that we have sent all of these servicemen and women for twenty years in an endless war, and they they come home, and many of them come home broken. Yes, and they come home broken and are not provided the services that they desperately need. Yes, until so, until they're carted off to Bellevue after committing a crime. Right, right. Yeah. What is the statistic? 22 veterans a day will commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And, and how many veterans are homeless? Um, you know, so yeah, that, I think that's one of the greatest stains on our nation. You know, people talk about slavery being the quote unquote original sin, but last time I checked slavery has existed since hum humankind mm -hmm. was created. Um, but uh, I think one of the greatest stains on, on our country is how we've treated our veterans. Yeah. Yeah, we fought a war to end slavery. We haven't done a very... Uh, we haven't done our military veterans very well over the years. From, from the ones coming back from, from World War I on down, right? I mean, right. They, they, they protested because they came home to nothing, and had no jobs and no no prospect of a future because they were just turned out. And every time we finish a war, we just turn them all loose and, and downsize our military and leave these people high and dry. Then 
Vietnam comes along and we're spitting on them and calling them names and baby killers and all this, right. treating those people horribly. And it just, every time our military veterans come home, they don't come home to good things. And, and our country, as much as we like to wave the flag at ball games and say how much we appreciate our veterans, I think you're right. I think the proof is in the pudding. I mean, it's, we'll, we'll say how much we appreciate it, you know, when a crowd's watching, yeah. but, but the country, you know, the, what, what we've put in place to support our veterans when they actually come home, aside from waving a flag at a ball game is not much. And that's sad. Indeed. Um, Indeed. So the other, I think, self-defense lesson here is, again, it's the carry a weapon or carry a gun. Um, this is, again, New York, so these people don't have the luxury of the Second Amendment and the ability to carry a firearm for self-defense. But there's the fight for your life issue, right? This guy actually, this guy f- does as best he can. He fights to try to save his own life, and I think he probably did. Uh, he doesn't turn around and you know cover his head and plead for his life. Uh, he fights, tries to get the weapon away from the guy, tries yeah. to defend himself. A gun would have been nice, but he had the will to fight back. Right, right. Yeah. And, and we talk about what that, I hate that cliche about the only thing that stops a, a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun thing. I really don't like that cliche because what it takes is not a good guy with a gun. It's a good guy willing to fight back. Exactly, exactly. And, and, you know, there are places in this country, sadly, where good guys aren't permitted to have guns to protect themselves with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, New York being one of them. Um, yep. But, yeah, thank God this guy had the will to fight. Um, to put a different spin on this, um, looking at an, another article, it turns out that... Uh, and this was an article from some website called techgate.org. Mm-hmm. And it says, his family says he is an army veteran and has suffered from mental illness since returning from a tour in Iraq in 2009. Mm. So, yeah, the failures of our government to take care of those who have returned carrying the the mental and emotional scars of war no, yeah, yeah we, we, we treat the physical scars. You know, you, you had a, a limb blown off right. and so forth. We take care of that, but how many of these get the mental health they need? And, and you know, I, it's, I feel terrible saying this because it's really sad that it took this, this uh, incident, this crime that he committed, but perhaps now he'll finally get the help that he needs. Yeah, and hopefully it didn't, co- and thankfully it didn't cost someone losing their life to do it. Right, yeah. right. But, but again, you know, there again, if if the government would take care of our veterans, yeah. But there's a chance that this incident would never have happened in the first place. Very true, very true. And 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 it and the mental health system in general is pretty, right, pretty pathetic as well. So right, it's no one. It, it's it's. It's not surprising that it's not uh, it's not helpful for veterans either. All right, we've gone about forty minutes here, so we're going to wrap this up and and save the other two. I've got two more short ones for the Reformation Gun Club. Um, if you would like to hear us analyze these other two stories, uh, be sure to check out the Reformation Gun Club at armedlutheran.us slash gun club for as little as a dollar a month. You can become a member and get access to great additional content like uh, like we're going to uh, dive into here in a moment. Pastor, thank you for joining me. Absolutely. It has been a pleasure. And folks, if you have any comments or any questions, any thoughts about uh, what we discussed here today, please visit our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback. Leave us a voicemail or a voice message. We would love to hear from you. Um, Next week is another variety show, and uh, we'll have some great content from the entire cast in episode 280. Until then, keep shooting, keep praying, 
We'll talk to you next time. John Bennett is the pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Willow Creek, Minnesota. For more information, visit stjohnswillowcreek.org. For show notes, be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. Check out the Facebook page, The Armed Lutheran, or join our Facebook group, Fans of Armed Lutheran Radio. If you like what you hear, please leave us a comment on our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback or a review on iTunes and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening to Armed Lutheran Radio, a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network.